Thank you for joining me for another Old World Exploration. This exploration takes us to Superior, Wisconsin. As you can see here, uh, a port sister city with Duluth, Minnesota. Duluth, uh, one of my more viewed videos. I did one, of the, one on Duluth uh, fairly early on in my uh, time here on YouTube. But we're going to look across the St. Louis Bay at Superior. And as I try to dig, dig into some of the uh, roots of Superior, Wisconsin, here on the Wikipedia, uh, I'm already getting a good chuckle out of the way they begin the history portion. The, the first log cabin in Superior was erected in 1853. <laughs> I love those narratives where they have, uh, often they'll have a postcard of that, that first uh, log structure, and then of course came the brick and stone, is what they'll tell us. Of course we question that narrative here on this channel. But not a large... Um, city, small city I guess you could call it. In modern day we actually have less people than there were in 1900. You can see here 31,000, 26,000 in the modern day. And again in that brief history blurb that we get on the Wikipedia, they talk about the railway coming in and uh, be it becoming a uh, launch pad basically for uh, much of what came through the ports, iron and steel, grain, coal, and lumber. And then a boom period they talk about from 1888 to 1892, which would be the reason we see these architecturally designed business blocks in downtown Superior. Calling it the new Chicago is what they thought it would turn into, but apparently it never got there. And this is a bird's eye view from the 19 teens, I believe. 1913 is the written date. I don't actually see the date on the map itself, but it gives us a decent view of uh, that harbor. There's uh, Duluth across the way and what we can expect from Superior, Wisconsin. They actually have a lot of these all penciled in here too. A lot of these structures that we're going to be taking a closer look at. So really enjoy some of these bird's eye views that you can find on the Library of Congress uh, website. Of course, I've found historical anomalies while looking through these, so there's all sorts of hidden gems to be found, I think, in these archives. And as we begin to look through the file I have on Superior, I would like to thank uh, viewer Jason for doing some boots on the ground, getting some photographs at the Historical Society there, and sending me a lot of these visuals. Uh, local, uh, that local flavor always helps these videos. Uh, gives, gives me a better perspective on the area as well, and the viewer, I think so. Thank you for doing that. I'm pleased to present what you found. And w what we found is quite a, quite a banger, as they say. The Grand Opera House of Superior, Wisconsin. Looking very Moorish, I would say. We'll see that again as we move forward. And you can see these are pictures of uh, pages taken out of, of some of these books. This would be one of those... Uh, those boom time blocks they mentioned on the Wikipedia, no doubt. The stone and brick and the ornamentation very evident here in Superior. And never really a large city, never really catching on according to the uh, population demographics we see. Some very, very ornate residences in Superior. Taking us back to that old world, the wagon works industrial area. See the hearth and buggies and the streets. I always like these old depictions as well. And we're always looking for that brick and stone, um, those telltale signs of the old world structures that we've become so used to seeing here on this channel. And of course the ornamentation as well. The New Jersey block, so this would be that uh, opera house here you can see. All that fancy ornamentation there. But even as it uh, as the structure carries on down the way we're getting all the signs of this uh, old world architecture. And looking at the population demographics, uh, I think it's worth noting that in that decade from 1890 to 1900, we have a population increase threefold from 11,000 to 31,000, which they'll tell us so many of these structures were built during. 
and again you have to wonder about the uh, how disorienting that would have been if you're having a threefold increase in population for the city you live in and you also have this development all this development going up all over the place it really would be would have been chaos if, if uh, we are to believe the historical narrative and the way that all of this magically came together Fantastic um, tech on the top of this here. Pretty amazing. I know it's a drawing, but beautiful structures, beautiful homes. Interesting depiction here as well. Um, the the raised sidewalk, like you can see the building continuing down below there, but the need to elevate. It really makes you wonder about the street level and how all that came together. Um, what the actual level of the posts have been, or if a lot of the posts were further down and the roads were built up in many of these locations. It's interesting. But these structures looking like they've been there for quite some time. Again, you can see how they're constructed. The brickwork and the facading. There's nothing uh, superficial or artificial really about any of it or temporary in any way and again we're seeing that awfully muddy street look you can see here like the region had been covered in a layer of mud and that uh, they're having to dig their way out you can see we have brick structures that look like they've been there a while so very interesting and for the longest time before I had awakened to this research uh, muddy streets I just thought were I never put the two together that the, the buildings seem to be much more um, a part of the uh, area and the muddy streets were more of a, uh, a temporary thing that was something that the, the, they were in the process of cleaning up getting everything back on its feet it, but it does make sense now looking at so many of these visuals structures like this the, the date 1892 etched into it to take you off the scent. These stone structures, 1890, they'll tell us. And we have to believe them because they put the number on the front of the building. Nothing more to the story. Nothing to see here. Move along. And we get, again, some photographs from uh, from Jason's boots on the ground, telling us a little bit about the region, too, which there's some interesting stuff in here. We get a brief explanation of the Tower Avenue arch here. We'll see that later on in the uh, slideshow. Um, we also have a little explanation on the horse-drawn streetcars that were first used on Tower Avenue, 1887, horse-drawn. And then they were soon replaced by the electrified cars in 1890. So, again, the infrastructure being implemented before the technology has been provided to the people. And they just we're just supposed to believe that the horses were pulling them. And that's how they were built until they figured out the electricity part of it. I mean, I, th I think that's a major flaw in the historical narrative. A puncture, let's say, in their, uh, their story. But you can really see the sense of age on these structures. A parade. Another pit, another look at the parade. And a theater. Another part of old world living, I think, is that uh, entertainment aspect. Of visual, uh, visual arts, the uh, Musical arts, I'm sure, were all a very rich part of, of the old world culture and what we know of as uh, the, the classical period and the performing arts and what we have left over is really just the remnants of what was once, I'm sure, um, a great and thriving part of uh, our culture and who we are. And so many of these small towns had their theaters and uh, opera houses and uh, really not fitting the narrative of this mass immigration. Try to get on your feet. Try to uh, establish establish yourself in a new area, a new country. 
you know. I've seen quite a few empire blocks in my travels as well across the continent. These actually look like the remnants as well, like a lot of what would have surrounded these blocks, these corner blocks, have probably been demolished. And this is just what was left over. That's how it feels, that hard hard stop again there on that side doesn't really fit. It feels like it was part of a much, uh, much larger um, city. And we are seeing the indications again here of the brick paved streets, the streetcars and looking much more aged than the narrative will tell us with that 1890s period. These types of structures really have a lot more weight than I feel they should for their purpose in a lot of these small towns especially. They just doesn't, don't make a lot of sense. And, uh, quite a difficult building process. Of course we have the New York block I remember 30,000 people, um, 10,000 people in 1890, and all of this shooting up in that time period. We still, we're still seeing this in horse and buggy era here. So this is over a hundred year old photo, no question, and then some. Uh, these are looking like they've been there quite some time. And then what about this? Are we looking at possibly a refurbishing? Not making a lot of sense with the surrounding area. It's looking like a modern style of insulating going on in here. I'm not sure what they're trying to depict. Hmm. Very muddy looking streets though. And what, we have a fire hydrant in the mud? Interesting. All right, we'll roll through quite a few schools now in this very small city. I'll try to be uh, quick about it, but you could always pause and read if you like. Nelson Dewey, Dewey School. Nelson Dewey School. The second Nelson Dewey School, school apparently built in 1934. And Carpenter School. Matt Carpenter. Oh, the Great Blaine, of course, built in 1893. This would have been when they had around 12,000 people, would be my guess. A massive population influx, yet they were... Uh, must have been anticipating it and building these types of structures. Come on. Come on. Really? Uh, the Great Erickson, of course, John Erickson. Does he have a hand hidden in there? I don't know. Expect, I expect him to, though. <laughs> ah, Honest Abe, of course. Built in 1893, same time period. Would you, would you look at that? How many structures were put up in that three, two, three year period at the beginning of the early 1800s? What do you think? Is it a believable, is it a likely story? A believable story? What do you think? William Cullen Bryant. This one's also built in 1893. Hmm. There's some busy, busy construction uh, workers at that time. No shortage of work for uh, skilled trades at that time. Built in 1893. Wow. Are they just recycling this narrative and changing the names? That's how it feels. It's very thin. Let's keep moving. <laughs> oh, you'll have to pardon my uh, my chuckles. Again, 1893. Named for Timothy O. Howe. Are these even real people? Uh, maybe they were. I'm sure they said, well, just name the school after you. You're in the club. We'll name the school after you. That building there will be named after you. And we'll say that you funded it and everything. And you'll go down in history as a great man. Let me know when you think this starts to stink. Good old Ben. An homage to Ben Franklin. Superior High School. With the columns, of course. 
Yeah, thanks again, Jason, for uh, getting these photos. This is fantastic stuff, and it would be very difficult to uh, to find them in this format. So, pleased to present this. And I'll just briefly roll through some of what I found. I think we're coming to the end of Jason's photos here. Again, the uh, opera house for a, for a small uh, harbor city, having to look like uh, yeah something out of a fairy tale. There you can see the streetcars, very well established. Of course, originally built to be pulled by horses, but luckily um, Thomas Edison was able to provide electricity to the world, and uh, they were able to electrify all those. But if it wasn't for him, I'm sure they'd still be pulling them with horses. Yeah, okay. YMCA. You have to have a YMCA made of brick with basement windows in a very early time period. Anywhere, to, in any town USA, really. So this is just a collection of postcards that I discovered um, about highlighting Superior and uh, some of the old world structures and maybe some double ups on the schools. We have a Carnegie Library and there's just a quick modern day shot from the Wikipedia page showing you that library as it stands today. Here we have a very large structure and it designated as a dormitory for the normal school. Well, here's the normal school. As if there weren't enough schools already, this is what they're calling the normal school in, in Superior, Wisconsin. So they had the dormitor dormitory for the people to live in while they went to that normal school. Yeah, sounds perfectly normal to me. There's another look at it, the normal school. <laughs> Hotel Superior, I'm assuming is this here. You can see the sign. I'm not sure if this this possibly the back end of that uh, opera house. That uh, jaw dropper, let's say. There's that post office and customs house that I mentioned that just, just has too much weight and texture to it for for, uh, for it to be believable that they would need to build a structure like that in such a small city. This logic goes out the window. There's one of the high schools we saw. And another look at the opera house in postcard format. So what do you expect when we when I tell you that we're looking at a city of uh, 30,000 people from 1900? Is the expectation that the people of the time were capable and uh, able to build all these structures, or do you think there's a uh, you think there are holes in the narrative that uh, we need to explore? Are there threads that we need to tug at? Of course, I think there do. That's why I have my channel, and uh, I welcome you to explore your own ideas and theories. I bring uh, I bring the visuals to you with some of my ideas, but uh, that's really all they are, is my opinions and my ideas. I can't really say anything for sure unless I could come up with some sort of time machine. But alas, no time machine. This is the best we can do. And I want to encourage anyone watching this to... Uh, if you want to highlight a place that you live or a place that you know of that's worth looking at to get in touch with me if you want to do your boots on the ground like Jason did um, to make this video possible I would be happy to showcase um, your city town region specific building whatever it might be and of course this is what they do to those those types of buildings the opera house building they uh, go from this to this. So if you see buildings with these type of top in your town, it may have once looked like that. Alright, thank you for watching. Until next time.